Today on Beerus TV, we're going to talk UV. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of Beerus TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week we're going to talk about UV sterilizers, why someone would use one, how they work, common misconceptions, is there a better solution, followed with a few install tips. UV sterilizers are probably one of the more hotly debated topics in our hobby and almost everything you read on them is someone's opinion based on anecdotal experiences, something they heard somewhere, or an outdated or improperly done study based on systems very different than a home aquarium. Regardless of if they're effective or not, reefers all over the world commonly use them to reduce the outbreak risk of disease, algae, pest bacteria like cyano, and increase water clarity. The one thing I can tell you definitively and almost everyone would agree with is they're not going to be 100% effective at any of these things. So what I'd like to focus on is what they can do. Let's start with what the average reefer can expect out of using one. UV sterilizers are used all over the planet by zoos, public aquariums, universities, and commercial aquaculture operations to reduce waterborne pathogens and the chance of an outbreak. The key word in that statement was reduce. Note that I did not state eliminate. A UV sterilizer is not going to be the end all solution to making sure you never have an ick outbreak. Just part of a multi pronged overall approach to reducing the chances and speed at which it spreads if there ever is an outbreak. Basically, everyone will also agree a properly sized and installed UV sterilizer will reduce the chances of a disease outbreak by between 1 and 99%, which is basically the largest range possible. Where you find your tank in this range will largely depend on a variety of things like size and placement of the sterilizer, volume of fish, general fish health, feeding practices, husbandry, water quality, and new fish introduction habits. Knowing the sterilizer isn't going to be 100% effective, you need to make your own determination if you want it to be part of your disease prevention approach. First thing is, are these fish just some fish in your house or do you and your family consider them pets? How much did the fish cost? Generally, how devastating would it be if you lost most or all of them? And do you have the time, money, and space to implement UV properly? Personally, I'm in this for the long haul, so if I can protect my pets, investment, and increase the odds of long-term success and survival rates, I will. And the reason why you see this Emperor Aquatics UV sterilizer on our office clown harem tank. As to the ability to clarify the water, UV sterilizers will prevent and solve bacterial blooms as well as algae blooms that turn the water green, but those are somewhat rare events and there are other ways to prevent this type of thing, so I wouldn't utilize a sterilizer for only this purpose unless everything else I was doing didn't work. Another thing reefers buy a UV sterilizer for, but is going to have limited to no value, is on pest algae or bacteria like cyano that grows on the surface or sand or rock. It's somewhat possible it could reduce the spread of these things to other areas of the tank, but it isn't going to be a solution for removing it, and other methods would be much more effective. Okay, so how does a UV sterilizer work? Many people believe that it's killing algae, bacteria, and pathogens, but what it's really doing is using ultraviolet light to damage the DNA within the reproductive cells so these things can no longer reproduce themselves. How effective it is at this is a combination of three things. Strength of the UV bulb, contact time with the bulb, and the amount of time the total system water volume passes through the sterilizer each day. For that reason, UV sterilizers that are actually capable of working are often large, higher wattage, and as a result, not inexpensive as well. One of the reasons I think UV in general is such a hotly debated topic is because our hobby is riddled with cheap mass market UV sterilizers, which are designed to sell product by being small and affordable. I think your best bet is to look for a sterilizer that's marketed to and used by the industries where they've been effective using them, such as zoos, public aquariums, and aquaculture facilities, where survivability equals profitability. This is why at BRS we currently only offer the Emperor Aquatics line, which has been popular in these industries for ages. You'll notice some pretty big differences on the recommended wattage and physical size between the Emperor Aquatics UV and hobby grade sterilizers. For instance, there are a ton of tiny sterilizers like this one, which says it's good for 55 gallons. Most of these small UV sterilizers are just in the market to provide something small and affordable because they will sell, but these types of UV sterilizers are really what fuels the continual UV debate. Just to give you a reference point, the smallest commercial grade UV we sell is this 18 watt light version, which is almost two feet long and only good for a 60 gallon tank, which is just five gallons more than this one. The comparison between the two products is pretty dramatic to say the least. 
So other than the things we already talked about, there are a few other common misconceptions out there. Many reefers are concerned they could kill beneficial bacteria. Well, it is possible the sterilizer will damage some bacteria. Almost all of the beneficial bacteria lives on the surfaces of the rock, sand, or filter media, where the bacteria will never pass through the UV filter, so this is very likely to never have any meaningful impact. There's also no end to the list of heavily stocked reef and fish-only tanks that utilize UV, which supports this fact. Some reefers are also concerned they might damage or kill some copepods or amphipods. Basically the same thing here. If one got sucked into the pump and stayed inside the sterilizer long enough, this might be true, but a very small portion of the pods in the tank are going to wander into the pump intake. It's pretty common for reefers to add a UV sterilizer during a disease outbreak thinking it will help cure the fish. Since the organisms harming the fish are on the fish itself, the sterilizer is going to have little to no impact on the current outbreak and the fish already affected. It might prevent or slow the spread, but even that might be unlikely at this point. That said, nothing makes you want to add a preventative measure like this more than experiencing an outbreak, so it's still not a bad idea to implement to help reduce the chances that this will happen again in the future. So if a UV sterilizer isn't 100% effective, is there a better solution? Absolutely. Quarantining and treating every fish before you add it to the tank, maintaining a low volume of fish, good husbandry, excellent water quality, and providing a proper diet will be a way more effective solution fighting against disease. But some of these things are just not practical for every reefer. And even if they were, a UV sterilizer is just going to improve the results. So there are a lot of better options, but all of them together really is the most effective solution. Just a couple of tips on installing your UV. The first is select the right unit for the tank. If there's one thing that you should learn from this video, it's don't undersize it or it's pretty much a waste of time. While I wouldn't go crazy, oversizing the sterilizer isn't going to hurt anything. The Emperor Aquatics models come in a variety of wattages as well as a light, normal, and high output model. Pretty much the difference between the first two is just the size of the tube going from two and a half inches to three and a half. The larger pipe takes up more insulation room but also increases contact time with a larger volume of water. There's also a high output version which uses a high output bulb and a five inch tube. Nice thing about the high output versions is while the units are a bit fatter, they can handle really large systems without getting ridiculously long. For instance, this 50 watt system can handle a tank up to 330 gallons. Getting the right flow rate is also critical. Again, this is about contact time and cycling the entire system water volume the correct amount of times in a day. For instance, this 25 watt sterilizer needs between 330 and 550 gallons per hour for algae and bacteria, but for protozoa and protecting the tank from disease outbreak, it's only 55 to 92 gallons an hour. This range is based off lamp life, so I'd shoot for the low end to make sure you have the proper contact time as the bulb ages. When selecting a pump, make sure you select something that can handle head pressure and not something small like a maxi jet or MJ. These CJ silent pumps are nice. If I'm shooting for 55 gallons an hour but need to pump it up a few feet through this large sterilizer, I might select something like the CJ Synchro 2, rated for 560 gallons, and use a control knob on the front to tune it for the right flow rate. Easiest way to measure the flow rate is time how long it takes to fill a gallon jug and do the math. For instance, if it takes a minute to fill a gallon jug, the flow rate is around 60 gallons an hour. Lastly, all of the Emperor Aquatics UV systems come with unions which allow for hard plumbing. If you'd like to use hose or tubing, you can pick up a couple of these spigot to barb adapter fittings and glue them in. If you have any questions about UV or advice for your fellow reefers, check out the comments area below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because we release two new reefing videos every week. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.